Whilst in Amarillo, Texas, I had the opportunity to visit the Amarillo Railway Museum and tour the famous White Train, which was once used to transport nuclear weapons between Pantex plant and many other facilities of the U.S. nuclear weapons complex. The routes for transporting nuclear weapons and bomb components are marked in yellow on this map and cut across most parts of the United States. Even if you don't live near a nuclear weapons related site, chances are you've been close to one before. My name is Natasha Bajma, and these are my dogs, Charlie and Luna. We're embarking on the adventure of a lifetime, a 365 day journey across America with my Ford 350 Super Duty pickup truck and a truck camper. But this is no ordinary road trip. This is what happens when a disillusioned nuclear weapons expert going through a midlife crisis, tries to begin a new career, but can't quite get off topic. Radioactive Road Tripping is a travelogue show that documents my transformation from a longtime national security expert to a newbie director, cinematographer, and producer. In addition to visiting the museum, I had the opportunity to learn about the white train from the Pantex historian. So the white train um, was called the white train because it was painted white. Not always the most creative with the nicknames. But the white train was used by the nuclear weapons complex to transport weapons and components uh, to different uh, sites throughout the nuclear weapons complex. Uh, it was utilized starting in the 1950s. Um, initially, they used traditional gondola cars or box cars. They put the weapons or components in there, different sandbags and things like that. But then, about the mid-1950s, Sandia Laboratories uh, man uh, designed and through all manufacturing, actually manufactured, specially designed rail cars to transport those weapons throughout the United States. Now they are reinforced on the bottom and on the sides and they're actually top loaded so they have a heavy metal plate um, on top of them and then they would have been brought in, each individual rail car would have been brought into a specific building and then there would be a crane that would lift that heavy metal plate off and then the rail car could be loaded or unloaded. And this provided an additional measure of security while they're out on the rail line. Now the rail cars also, you're not just gonna send your nuclear weapons just out without any sort of escort. And so they would have these escort coaches. They'd be escorted by uh, people from the Atomic Energy Commission. Today, the Office of Secure Transportation has that mission. And there, um, they would have these coaches that actually had additional security means in there so that they could watch and make sure that nobody was trying to hop the trains and things like that. There'd be mirrors on the sides and um, they would sit up on a cupola so, with uh, bullet resistant glass so they could look around and make sure that nobody was trying to hop the train. Now, with the additional protest movements throughout, protesting against nuclear weapons throughout the late 1970s and into the early 1980s, the uh, white train became uh, a train of multicolors. So you'll see, uh, you know, blues and reds and this beautiful green color. Um, and that was to help camouflage them so that it wasn't this bright white train. Now, originally the rail cars, they were painted white to help deflect heat and try to keep the rail car cooler. Um, and it would go about 35 miles an hour on the rail line for safety and security. Um, so that meant that um, the protesters could kind of spot the train because it's going very, very slowly. Um, and due to that, the uh, DOE by that point um, had decided to transition to semi-trucks, which were introduced in the late 1970s with, uh, and we had a new national highway system, so that provided nice, reliable transportation. And so since then, that's how uh, weapons and components are moved throughout the United States today, is by semi-truck. The last train to leave Pantex with any sort of uh, weapon or component was in 1987. At the Amarillo Railway Museum, you can see how the different cars on a so-called white train would have been configured and tour some of the original cars. The typical arrangement would be a guard escort coach followed by a power buffer car. Next would come the weapons transport cars, however many are needed. 
these cars would then be followed by another power buffer car and a second guard escort coach. Basically, you would have the heavily armored cars carrying nuclear weapons sandwiched between buffer and escort cars on both sides. The escort cars are easily identified by their cupola or turret, which has narrow windows at the top for the security guards to look out, as well as slots for guns to shoot out if they need to defend the train. The museum offers a unique opportunity to tour one of the original guard escort coach cars. Let's go check it out. The escort cars were designed to be self-contained living units. They had sleeping quarters, showers, full service kitchens, and small community areas. Each white train had a crew of seven security guards. The slow pace of these trains, which traveled at 35 miles per hour, meant very long cross-country journeys. One of the most common routes for the train took nuclear bombs from Texas to Bangor, Washington, where they would deliver weapons at a submarine base. There are a few interesting things about the kitchen that I'd like to point out. It is supposed to double as a community space, but there are black holders for guns on the walls. The small cream-colored square openings with the black handles provide slots for the guns to shoot if they need to defend the train. I'd also point out the warning sign on the refrigerator, which provides a bit of irony given that the train is carrying nuclear weapons. We are now in the turret, or cupola, where the security guards on duty can monitor communications, look out through the bulletproof glass windows, and put their guns through the slots in the event that they have to defend the train. As I mentioned before, a power buffer car comes after the guard escort coach. This car is empty and serves as a buffer between each end of the train and the weapons transport cars. Next come the weapons transport cars. As you heard earlier, these cars are top loading and require a crane to insert the weapons inside. That means that there's no way to get access to these weapons without such equipment. We also found a combo safe on the side of the weapons transport cars. The museum administrators do not know what these are for, but we can assume that they added another layer of security to prevent unauthorized access to the weapons. At the front of the white train, you would find a standard locomotive. The museum offers the opportunity to climb up inside of one and get a better look. I hope you enjoyed this tour. And if you ever find yourself in Amarillo, Texas one day, I hope you'll stop by the museum yourself. If you want to follow my journey, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to have access to behind the scenes content and exclusive merchandise, become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Natasha Bajama. 